All right, and let's remember, maybe to start out with tonight, pray for Ukraine. They're really in a bad way. Excuse me, they're really in a bad way. I don't know how they're going to come out of this without God. I really don't. And, um, I mean, they've been holding their ground. They've been doing a good job, but there's overwhelming forces that are coming. And I don't know how it's all going to end, but I, I just have a feeling in my gut that the Lord is going to intervene somehow. And I don't know how that is, but he's God and we're not. We just need to pray. So let's do that before we get going. Lord, tonight we lift up Ukraine. We lift up the people there and the resolve and the will that they have to win and to fight for their country, for their freedom. And we just pray, Lord, that you will intervene on their behalf, that you will stand with them, Lord, in a mighty way. We we come against this enemy that would try to destroy them, Lord. And we pray for, it's not Russia, Lord, it's Putin who has become deranged and he's, he's not well. We pray for him that the Holy Spirit would come upon him and convict his heart and turn him away from this evil, Lord. And we pray for the soldiers and the military and the people of Russia that they'll rise up against Putin and they, that they will not allow this to go on anymore, that they will bring him under arrest. And Lord, I pray that this thing will be stopped before any more uh, needless death occurs. And we just pray for the protection and the grace of, of God to be with this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so. So tonight. We're going to uh, discuss, first of all. Our new website, which I'm excited about. And Game Warrior and I, we were on there last night. It was the first time for Game Warrior to see it. And, you know, I made him a host. A host it means like an admin. And he really liked it. I mean, he was really thrilled with it. And it's really hard to explain it. You have to kind of see it to understand it. But it's an it's a self-contained system, meaning that you could have your video conferences there. Like say we want to have team conferences where we just do like team training. It alerts everybody that's on the site that we're live. And you just click a button and you go right to the web conference. Um, there's chat throughout the whole site. You can chat anytime, any time of day with people. Um, but one of the cool things about it, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time about the features and all that. I would do that another day. But it has a thing where you can create clubs or little groups around topics. So you could have a book club or a technology club or a Bible club or whatever. And basically people that are of like mind and like spirit could go there and join it. And then you could share individually or in a group with the people that are in that club. So it's kind of an interesting thing, but it's a website. So it'll have all, you know, the things that you would normally have on a website, but it's also a membership site. So people join it. I kind of, the only way I could explain it would be like if you had, if you took Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and Instagram, and Discord, and mashed it all together. <laughs> That's what this site is. It's just incredible. And we're going to be able to have classes and stuff like that for people that want to learn more about the Bible and prayer and just a lot of stuff. So what I'm doing now, or will be doing, 
is to get everybody on our team over there. And here's my question tonight for the group here, for our, our um, uh, for everybody here. And those of you listening, hopefully by video. When I invite you, I, if you have any aspiration of all of helping me on the website, and I mean like as a moderator or an admin or whatever you want to call it, then when I invite you with a link, I have to include that in the link. Otherwise, you're just going to be a member. And it's the way that the site works. You can't go back and change that later on. So I kind of have to know before I invite you, if you want to be, it's called a host. And, but basically all that would mean is that you would be able to help us if we wanted you to do something on the site, uh, work on the site, you would have access to it. So if you want to be a helper, just basically that's what that would be. Then let me know. And so when I invite you, I'm inviting you as an admin. It's not a big deal either way. It's just that I don't know why they created it that way, but basically there's different invite links for different people. So I'm assuming everybody that's a team member here would want to be a team member there. It would just make sense to me because what it might be an occasion where we might say, Hey, we need you to go on the site and do some follow up. There's new people that are joining because this site is going to reach people that aren't just on discord. It's we're going to have a public URL. So, you know, people from all over the world can come and join this site. It's, it's going to be, you know, not just exclusive to discord. It's anybody and everybody. In fact, if you're, if people are on Facebook, there's a link that you can invite your Facebook friends with one click. It sends them all a link. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, there's a lot of things, a lot of stuff. And I'm going to be doing probably in about a week, maybe on the weekend or something, I'm going to be doing what, what I call um, a tutorial of the website or whatever. We're going to actually go on the website together. The cool thing is you can be on Discord like right now. And you can also be on our website at the same time. <laughs> so when you're on the website and we're, the website doesn't have like video and audio chat like Discord does. It has conferencing for webinars, which is a little different. And we'll explain that maybe in the tutorial. But you can be on Discord and be on audio and you can be on the walkthrough of the website at the same time. So you're, it's like you're actually on discord, even though you're on the website. Does that make sense? It's kind of crazy, but ideally that's what we did last night when I was showing it to game warrior. Are you there game warrior? Are you still talking or? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So what was your initial impression of the website? Oh, yeah, I actually loved it. Uh, it's more, um, it's more helpful, you know, more options. Uh, you could uh, customize it more. Uh, yeah. The events and actually uh, creates polls for you. That's more, uh, but yeah, I love that part, you know. Yeah, it's got like uh, some people refer to it as AI technology, artificial intelligence. But what, what it does is it creates polls, questions. It creates um, icebreakers, feedback. And it does it automatically as a site. So, like, there's, there's things that we set up in the algorithm so that when somebody joins, they get a welcome letter immediately. Um, it's just well thought out, well built site. It was built by, hey, hey Ruby, you'll love this. It was built by a woman who worked for Google and she went on her own and wanted to have a social network that was more in tune with 
originally she built it <laughs> kind of like to reach out to females that were in business and stuff to help them have a place to network and all this stuff. But then it, it, over the years, it evolved into a more um, like a social networking for anyone, anybody that has a group that wants to brand it with their own colors and their logo and have all this, you know, stuff where, and they just kept working on it and working on it and fine tuned it to where now it's like, it just runs itself. They said you only have to post three times a week on the site. And because there's so much uh, in the algorithm that's happening that it's like busy all the time, but you can post there like you can here, send pictures, photos, that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm thinking maybe Saturday or whatever, we could have like a walkthrough for people and then invite people over there. Does that sound good to everybody? And then that way, you know, you can see the website. Um, it's going to be by invite only at first. We're not going to do a, a huge public, you know, lift off of the site probably for a while. For a while, it's just going to be team members and you can invite people individually now if you invite people <laughs> here's the thing if you invite people you become what's called an ambassador of our site you earn reward points and you actually you know i gotta fix it because right now the way it's set up it's too easy i mean literally if <laughs> if you invite one person you're like bronze level already and you win like you know, you get a gift card or whatever, and then you go to silver, then you go to gold, you become a gold uh, ambassador. It, it's just crazy. But, you know, we got to fix the, the, you know, it's it's a reward system that we set up. So, in other words, there's a lot of things going on on the website, and we're going to need help with it. So, if you want to help with the website. Now, I know some of you are helping on the outreach team, and that's another some more news I have on that in just a minute. But you're helping on the outreach team. And I don't want anybody to get too overwhelmed. I know you got school, you got whatever. But if if you want to do a little bit of this or a little bit of that and, and not get overwhelmed, that's fine. I'm not going to overwhelm anybody. If I see somebody that looks like they're just, you know, getting overwhelmed, I'm going to probably say something. Say, hey, maybe you should limit yourself to the outreach team or whatever. I don't know. I just, I've learned over the years that sometimes people really want to help and that's awesome, but we want to make sure people are doing it in moderation, moderation being a balance. You see what I'm saying? Yay or nay? Yay or nay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. All right. So maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more on Thursday night. And we'll, if, if everybody wants to, you know, maybe an early Saturday night thing, after dinner thing, we come on here, we do a little tutorial. We can start out in Discord like me and Game Warrior did. You can be on the audio and we can go over there and just do a walkthrough and then sign you up and all of that. And you'll, you'll get a link and we get our admins over there. Everybody signed up. All right. On the next front, let's see, outreach team. I have some news. I decided after scouring the earth for a, a, a replacement of MailChimp, <laughs> I decided there is nothing better out there than MailChimp. <laughs> They're all just kind of, they don't do what we needed to do. MailChimp is older and more... Um, more older, kind of like Facebook, where you have Facebook and then you have like Discord. Discord's newer and more vibrant. Well, MailChimp is older, but it has the one thing that the other ones don't have. And that is you can create a template and then immediately send it to as many social network accounts as you have. That's the that's the winning thing. Well, anyway, I found out how we get around having to have, you know, we, the way that MailChimp works is they lock it down on each device. So every time you're on a different device, device, like say one time you log in on a phone, 
you can set it set it on that device that you don't ever get a notification again and it won't it won't make you verify every time but let's say you go to your pc well now you're going to have to verify every time you're on a different device it makes you click on an sms text message where you have to verify if you've ever joined any sites online with your phone you know how that works they send you a notification code you have to plug that in and then you're good to go well the way we get around that you're still going to get notification codes and stuff like that but mailchimp allows me to have three seats hey how you doing Tenfia? It allows me to have three people that can become admins on the site. So it's not that much money. It's a little monthly charge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug that in. And so the three of you that are already um, helping me with the outreach stuff, you're going to be able to log in with your own email and password. And you'll be able after that to be able to just go right into the site. You'll have admin privilege. You'll be able to go in and edit the templates, make the make the posters and, and do the notifications and, and the outreach stuff. So you don't have to worry about, you know, um, trying to get that authorization from MailChimp, <laughs> which doesn't work anyway because MailChimp recognizes that you're trying to log into to my account from a different device it, and then it's going to ask me do you know who this is and if i say yes it'll let you in but it'll only let you in one time then you have to keep doing that over and over well, this eliminates all of that you get your own login code you get your own ability so i know that's a little confusing but it really isn't once you once i sign you up then i will give you um It'll give me a code or something. I don't know exactly how that works. And then you'll click on that link code. You'll go ahead and sign up as, you know, as if you were signing up for the site. And then it'll give you the ability to log in under your own name, your own password. But you'll just be coming onto my site. All right. So that'll be coming in the next couple of days. And when it happens, I'll let you know when you, you can log in there. I know that that was kind of a headache because of the way that uh, MailChimp works. <laughs> They're just trying to be overly, you know, cautious because we've got people's emails, you know, that we've we've collected, and we, you know, it's we don't want people's emails to be leaked out or somebody to hack into it. You know, that's what hackers do. They get emails and then they start from there. So that's why it's so locked down. But I'm not worried about you guys, you know, leaking out any emails or anything like that. You know, this is a very, I don't have that many anyway. But as we get more and more emails, that's part of this pro program is we're collecting emails so that we can email people about events and things like that ongoing. So, so that's coming in the next couple of days. So MailChimp. MailChimp. All right. On the outreach team, um, if we do the um, website tutorial Saturday night, Tentia, we're going to be doing on Saturday night. I think we're going to open it up for people that want to join our website. Now me and GameWare, GameWare already joined it last night. And we kind of did a walkthrough. I wanted him to see it. And he really likes it. And he thinks it's great. I like it. I think it's going to work for us. But we're going to invite people. And on this site, when it invites you, it invites you as a host. Either that or you can be invited as just a member. Well, I figure since everybody's already an admin or a, at least a moderator, meaning they have access to the site to help us, I'm just going to go ahead as far as our team goes and invite you with a magic link that you can click on and then it automatically makes you a host. So when you log in to the site, as you'll see, it'll you'll see your personal settings and you'll see network settings. All right. So 
we're going to do that Saturday night, kind of a walkthrough thing. And I'll let you guys know on Thursday what time and all of that. But once people join up over there, it's not going to take the place of Discord or anything like that. In fact, we're going to, we, you're going to be able to be on Discord and the website at the same time. I mean, literally, we did that last night. You could have the audio and it will, you know, that'll be on and then you can be on the website and, and, and do that. We're still going to have all of our main uh, services and that on Discord. The website is basically going to be for training and any kind of uh, webinar because it has a built in um, web conferencing and that any kind of webinars or special events um, that we want to do. We'll do it on the website. We might do our Tuesday night meeting on the website and that kind of stuff. But, you know, the reason the website is so good and important is it's all in one inclusive. In other words, we're not going to have to, you know, have ourselves stretched out over too many different places. Everything can be contained in the website and Discord. And that keeps it simple. The website, you got to have that. You can't just have Discord. Discord is not a website. Discord is a chat center for us. And we're still going to have that. That's not going to change a bit. So you can also chat on the website. So when we're doing events or we're doing trainings and all of that, now that will be something that we can do. But anyway, so we'll probably do that Saturday night. If that doesn't work for people, we can do some people on Saturday and whenever somebody else wants to come over. It's not that you couldn't figure the site out. It's not like super complicated. It's just that it's a little overwhelming when you first get on it because there's a lot of components to it. It has a lot of AI and algorithm stuff that, that is built into it. So we'll get to that uh, more on Saturday. And we're not inviting a lot of people there yet. So I'm going to ask you not to invite anybody yet until we open that up. Basically, we want to get our team over there and get everybody acclimated to the website and how it works. And once you see how it works and how it can benefit us, then I think it'll make more sense. And then once you get on there, you can you can talk to people. You, there's a there's a site wide chat. There's um you can there's a post stream. You can post just like you can on Discord. Um, but it's it, again, you know, we're not trying to be redundant and have one thing and then a redundant thing. It's got more things that we need, like file a lot of file um, groups, things like that, clubs. We actually can create clubs based on topics. So you could have a technology club, technology geeks, um, book club, whatever, motorcycle club. <laughs> Anything that's good, wholesome, it could be a club. Interest groups is what it's called. And that would be something that, and the neat thing about it is the site was built for mobile. So even though it works on any device, PC, whatever, when you sign up on go on either Google Play or um, iTunes, <coughs> you get it has a mobile app that comes with the site, but it's drawn off of their network. So when you put in the information, it'll automatically prompt you to put in our our site name, and then when you do that, you put your password and your um, email. And all of a sudden now your site becomes like a mobile app, which is really cool. I mean, it costs a lot of money to put a mobile app. I know I, we were going to do that, you know, about a year ago. And I still would like to have a mobile app, but I'm not ready to do that yet. But this is probably the best thing because you don't have to have an app. Well, technically like from the app store. Well, technically it is from the app store, but I mean, like having our own app, which cost a lot of money and to create that. And, and then you got to kind of know what you're doing to put it on the app store. This eliminates all that. It's just all there for us. So, you know, I like it. Game Warriors said he likes it. So I guess that 
takes care of that if we like it then we like it <laughs> but anyway there's a lot of things you know you could scour the internet to try to find a place to have a group and where you can connect and i think you know discord is one of the best obviously because you know we're on here so we wouldn't be on here if we didn't think it was good the second thing is when you're trying to find a website you could go old fashioned and just create a website, have people come there and look at stuff and leave. Or you could create a website experience for people that when, when immediately they join, they, they get a welcome message that automatically, they got all these AI intelligence and, and algorithms that are automatically sending you things and not irritatingly, but just letting you know your, you know, what's going on with the site and even a walkthrough if you want it and tell you how to use it. All that stuff. And we're just um, going to be doing that on Saturday. So hopefully, you know, that'll work out. All right. So the website, we did that. always want to touch on um, new people if you one of the things i want to say and i'm encouraged about is even though we have some people that are coming in and i don't find what they're doing objectionable there you know if, if they have a difference of, of opinion that's what makes the world go round I, I just don't want to live in a in a time when we can't wholesomely disagree with each other, but yet have good discussions. I mean, when I when I started this you know ministry, uh, you know, in 2013, and I was on Wire Club and all of that, that was every day. Every day there was 20, 30 people that would come in that would just want to argue with us, and some of them were trolls, and they got bounced. But then within that group, there were people that were just seriously seeking the truth, but they had a difference of opinion. And so I would entertain that and we would talk and we would discuss things. And that's how you grow and that's how you learn. So I thought it was good. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, people, you got to bounce them when they're not, you know, when they're just being, you know, a troll. And, and there's a difference. I think some of the people that came through this week may have started out trolling but ended up realizing that this was a worthwhile place. And so maybe their discussion came about a little more genuine after that. But I also think that you can learn a lot from other people and you can learn a lot from the discussions that you have. Now, am I going to change my position? Am I going to change my Christian worldview? No. But at the same time, you know, if I'm able to share some wisdom, or maybe glean something from somebody else, even though I might not agree with their total idea, at least we're, you know, iron sharpened iron, as the Bible says. So I think that's good. Chat is always good. And I'm always bringing that up, how we need to, you know, have our chat going. And, you know, I like to see it. And, and I like to see that people are taking that initiative on here to do that. That's awesome. So if we continue to do that, we're on our way. We're going to continue to grow. And so that is important. And then what we talked about last week, and again, you know, I, I did this week, I actually did some follow-up. I direct messaged a bunch of people that I haven't heard from on here. And I got some responses. Some people told me to go to, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't tell me that. <laughs> Uh, I just like, threw that out there for the fun of it. No, everybody was congenial. Everybody was good. Nobody said anything bad. But there was a few people that were like, you know, I think more or less maybe they came one time and they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But that was like before Christmas. I'm like, yeah, well, how you doing? And, and then so there was no discussion. Then other people are like, yeah, you know, I've been meaning to come, but I've been really busy. And then I got some good responses. 
but you know what? I don't ping them every day. I don't do this. It's just like once every couple months, you know, but I think we did get, and if I'm not mistaken, I think we got one person that came on right away, connected with us, and then they had to go. But it was good to see them, and we talked for a minute and whatnot. So that's all follow-up is. It's just taking some time. And if and if a few of us, are, and this is where the outreach team is really going to, you know, be able to do this. And not everybody has to do this. Already anybody can do this. You know, whoever wants to do this, it's just it's just a part if you see somebody they haven't seen in a while i'm sure you're probably already doing that maybe it's just a natural thing to want to go hey how you doing haven't seen you in a while but it's also something that we can do because we care about people and if they came into our server and maybe we had some contact with them and there's people that you know they might need some encouragement and maybe they just need like like we you know, we talked about Michelle, who is a good example of that. She comes a lot when she's uh, able to, and she likes to be on here. She enjoys the worship, but she's in you know she's she's admittedly in in, in publicly admitted that she struggles with that in her faith, and and that's honesty. And those are the people that I want to help. And so we, she, she, I keep reaching out to her and, and she keeps coming, but it's not as much as, you know, she probably wants, but that's just, you know, being a Christian, that's just being a good Christian neighbor and, you know, making sure people are all right, especially people that might have, you know, struggled with suicidal thoughts, especially that person a good contact ability to contact them an email. I don't like to get people's phone numbers so much on internet ministry because people are a little bit leery of that, but I don't see a problem with getting somebody's email and saying, Hey, in case we lose you on discord, I can keep up with you. And if I didn't do that over the years, I have a, from going back eight, nine years, emails, that I kept on a file and every now and then I'll pull that out and I'll email somebody. And that's amazing. Some people that were like, Oh man, I wondered where you guys were. wonder what happened to you or whatever. Cause we had to switch a few times out of different sites when sites went down and stuff. But anyway, follow up is an interesting thing. You know, you're going to get good responses usually, but that's something that you do just out of the Christian neighborly experience you know hey checking up on your neighbors good thing to do and so that initially falls under the outreach team which you know again people might want to do different things you know you might be more inclined to want to do you know making um posters and sending out notifications and things like that reminding people on discord putting up announcements Oh, they're all important things. I mean, it's all part of the growth of our site. But there's a lot of different things. And so, you know, again, we're going to be talking more about that. I think our next outreach meeting, I like to do those on Saturday, but we're not going to be able to do one this Saturday. So maybe next week we could do it on a Wednesday night or something a week from now. But I'll let you guys know. All right. Um, so we covered chat and follow. -up. Oh, yeah. Back on follow up real quick. So if you're, especially if you're on the outreach team and you're doing notifications anyway, like say you're sending out, you're putting the announcement up for Sunday service and you're, you know, he's sending a couple of things out to, to social network. It's a good idea to come back on discord and just take a few minutes. And if you, you know, depending on what you, if you're on a laptop, it's a little different setup, I think, than it is a phone or mobile, but you just look and go through your, your, your members, your contacts, who you, 
you know, and if you haven't seen anybody in a while, somebody that you know was active, you might not even know that many people yet, or you might not know somebody that was active. If that's the case, you could always let me know. I can tell you who's act, who was active at one time or another. But if you just want to go through there and say, hey, you know, send them a quick link. Tonight we're meeting at 9 o'clock, whatever. It's always a good idea to do that. But my thinking on that is you don't want to do it too soon. Like, in other words, this is kind of technical, but people have a short memory when it comes to online. They get bombarded with things all the time. They're on different sites, and they can't remember from one second to the next. So if you send something on, on Wednesday that's going to be going on on Sunday, that's gone. So what you want to do is you want to send things as close to the time that you're actually going to be meeting as you can. I wait till about, if I'm going to meet at 9, I wait till about 8.30. From 8.30 to 8.45, I'm sending out notifications. Boom, 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 boom. And if it's Discord, I might even wait till five minutes before and sometimes even after 9, boom, boom, boom. Hit them up. If they're online, boom, they can join immediately. That's the best way to do it. You can send things like if it's a Wednesday and we're going to be doing on Wednesday. If it's a Thursday and you're going to be doing a Thursday night thing, you could send something in the afternoon. You just have to be figure out how it works for you. I have to figure out how I do it, how it works for me, what I think has been the most effective. But I always send something before the service on Facebook, Twitter, wherever I'm at online, I'm sending out notifications. That's how I get people. Because somebody will inadvertently get that and they'll come on and, and, and it doesn't always happen, but it, more than not, we will get somebody from that. So that's a good way to keep people in the loop and all of that. All right. Well, we can talk about outreach stuff at another time because I don't want to take up all of our time with that. So, but that was just something I wanted to throw out there. All right. Um. I was in the um, the staff commands chat today, and I noticed that there's been some activity going on. Can you tell me anything that's going on, Game Warrior or Tentia, that might be uh, of value for everybody on the site? I saw that you you were doing something in there. Say that one more time. I was in. Uh, he was talking about what we're doing in staff in staff commands. Yeah, yeah. We're working on the with Unbelievable to try and figure out a system where whereby people would earn currency that they could spend on stuff. Oh yeah. Through like being active in chat and um, completing achievements and quests and, or something like that, mm -hmm. turn into kind of a game. Like talk uh, talk to this person or five minutes in dance or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Invite two people to the server. Uh huh. Like yeah. That's awesome. All right. Anything game more that you're thinking about or anything that you've been working on that, you might want to update us on today. Uh, I might uh, look into um, look at the Apollo bot about the probably the schedule for our meetings or whatever. If uh, someone forgets, I know uh, sometimes whoever forgets the well, and mainly sometimes may I forget to say there's a meeting today or whatever, but. I might be looking at the Apollo bot, so okay. you could do a separate um, reminder. I don't know for sure, because uh, I think it's already set to the announcement channel, but I don't know if I could actually create another one that announces in the staff discussion, but I don't know for sure, for though I'm just thinking of that one. Well, I think that, yeah, that, that's awesome. I, I think that when when you work 
like you do, you're working hard out there and you're getting home and you got very little time to deal with um, getting on here in the first place. I think what we need to do is make sure that we've got, we're stretching this out and that, you know, maybe including myself, you know, can work more on the reminders for the meetings and stuff like that. Cause sometimes I forget to even do it, you know, like, and again, I like to remind people even like for a meeting closer to six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock hour. And that way it's fresher in people's minds, you know, and then remember, but yeah, I think people just forget. I agree with you. Cause you know, I'll be honest with you. I fell asleep after dinner. I had a really hard day. I was, I had to pick up a chair for my mom and I had to get my brother and his truck. And it's just one of those days, you know, a lot of stuff going on. And I was laying down, I fell asleep. And before I knew it, it was like 20 to nine. And I'm like, Oh man. <laughs> I, I mean, literally almost two hours. I was on a couch, just saw and Z's you know? So I got up and I, I didn't even, it was not even in my head, this meeting. Then all of a sudden it just was like, wait a minute, you got a meeting. And so I got up, you know, and just ran in there and got ready. But that's just the way it is. I mean, that's life. But that's why we record these things and hopefully we, people can watch them and get some insight about what we're doing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so don't worry about that. We'll, we'll do the best we can to get people here. Um, try to remind people, um, if there's a, if the Apollo bot can help with that, that's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Hey, Ruby, did you have any ideas um, that you wanted to run by us? I know you had a couple ideas last week. Did they get addressed or are we still working on those? I think um, that one idea for like serious talk. Yeah. Um, for like a chat room for a serious talk. Uh huh. Um, I don't think that one has been addressed yet, but that okay. one is uh, something I'm still um, thinking about. Okay, serious talk. Oh, that's right. We were going to come up with a name for it that was. You know what? I was going to do a talk show, um, like a podcast with my nephew, Andrew. I mean, it would, it would have been me and him would just have been good together because we we feed off of each other and he's really he's actually probably going to go into politics he's that kind of a mind he really wants our country to do good he's got good ideas and he's he's involved in some group now locally some radical group no <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> He radicalized on me. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's just, it's a, it's a conservative group that he's involved in, but he's doing like a lot of talks and things like that. And so now we're not doing the show and we should, we should come up with something that we can do like on a Saturday night every now and then, or something where we just do like open topics. I mean, it'd be fun to do like, I don't know. Are we still doing that one sun, uh, uh, Thursday? Uh, the new, oh, yeah, 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 we are. In fact, thanks for reminding me. I got kind of busy this week with a lot of stuff, so I wasn't able to work on that idea. But I still think, you know, we said March. So what, today's the first day of March? Yes. Whew, man, time flies, doesn't it? So... Mm -hmm. Probably I'm um, looking at about the end of March for that to get launched, but we need to work on it. So what I need to do is I'm going to do a poll question and get your guys' feedback on what kind of topics you would like us to do. Because what we're going to do ideally is instead of doing a Bible study, I, we're still going to do, I don't know, somebody said to me, you mean you're going to do away with the Bible? No. Absolutely not. We're just going to repackage it in a different way to make it more interesting to young people. That's what you do when you have youth. You try to make it more youth friendly. So what are the youth into today? They're into TikTok and YouTube. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call segments. We're going to do like five, 10 minute segments. And we're going to choose a topic that I think is, that speaks to young people. And that's where I need help. I need to pick the minds of young people to find out what kind of topics would you like us to discuss. And so then we'll get, we'll take a poll and we'll get all those ideas and we'll put them all together. And then the, the whole show will evolve around a topic from a Christian worldview. That's where the Bible will come in. But we're going to do videos, music, and we're going to do, we're going to have special guest video speakers, uh, you know, people that maybe are experts in a certain field and they'll come and, and we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll get a YouTube video of them and we'll, we'll play that. So it's going to be cut up into segments. It's going to feel more like a show rather than sitting down and having a Bible study. We're still going to do our Friday prayer and Sunday night church. We're not we're going to change that up, but yeah, we are going to be doing this Thursday thing. And, you know, it's just, it's going to take me a little bit of, probably going to have you guys help me like run the videos and stuff in between. I'll, I'll have you queue up a video and you can stream it if you can. Some people can't stream because they don't have enough bandwidth. We ran into that problem. <laughs> you think you could just stream a video nowadays, but it's just, I don't know. I got a 5g phone and today I was out and I was looking up something on my phone it was slower than my 4G. And I'm like, what is going on? I thought 5G was supposed to be lightning fast. But I think the problem is I got to go into my Android phone and, and hit in the settings and figure something. There's something not right with it. But anyway, what was you going to say, Ruby? Um, for the streaming thing, is that only, does that only work on like, like computers or does it work on like mobile or something? No, they have mobile streaming. They're one of the few sites that actually have sort of mastered it. Discord does a good job, but I've never really used it that much. So I can't say, you know, if it's better than laptop, but you can stream on the mobile from your phone on Discord. Okay. You might want to test it out ahead of time, make sure it works. I know Nina was trying to, at one time do a video and uh, for movie night and I had to end up playing it because her internet wasn't that good. And, and if your internet's not that good, like there's certain speeds that you got to have to really stream. If you're a gamer, you, you know that you have to have a certain amount of bandwidth to stream and do games and stuff. And so most people, when they think about internet, they're not, if they're not a gamer or, or a, a, a streamer then they're just playing you know like they're just watching tv or whatever then it, normal speeds are fine i had to learn that the hard way when i first started doing streaming i had my i had a really cheap computer and it wouldn't wouldn't keep up i kept i would literally 10 times a night i'd have to reboot can you imagine that you're watching something and the, the speaker has to cut out 10 times? I mean, it was annoying. And I finally got a beefed up laptop that was for gaming and streaming. And now I never have a problem. But I think if you're just streaming like a video through your phone, it should be fine. If you've got your video on and you're doing audio and, vi and video and all that at the same time that might be a bit of a problem but if you're just streaming something with your audio that should be fine but yeah doing doing a service like that where you're actually making it more like feel more like what they're used to and we're, we're also going to do like have people submit a video a short video so it would have to be like a TikTok video something that's not bad a funny video or whatever and that video will get played in that in that certain night just something like that you know which little things like that believe it or not when you make it more like the world that they're used to you're it's kind of like if you you're communicating in their language now 
it's kind of like if you go to a mission field and you're trying to speak to people about Jesus and maybe they speak Swahili and you're speaking English, there's not going to be the connection there. And I'm not trying to say that young people are that, you know, out there or anything, but it's just a different world. And so we want to connect to that world, but yet not compromise or not, you know, still bring the word, still bring the gospel. But I want to do it in a way that's effective. I don't think necessarily the way I'm doing it, nine times out of ten, it would work if I was doing it with adults. It wouldn't be a problem because they're used to more traditional ways of communication. So I did this idea in the past, and it was a big hit, but I was on local television, <laughs> and I did a show where I had people come in. I had, an, I had a Satanist guy, a guy that was a Satanist come in, and he got saved, and he turned his life over. He was, he was a, in a rock and roll band. He had tattoos and everything all over his body, you know, and I was in a suit. It was like 1980, I think it was 1988, 89. So it was the 80s, end of the 80s. Anyway, I interviewed him. He had a book and I interviewed him on live TV and I had, back then it was VHS, you know, tapes, VCRs, and I had a tape of it. I kept it for years and I don't know what happened to it. I don't have it anymore, but I would love to have kept that tape just to play it back. But it was a great interview. The guy was like, he was a really good interview. But we did a lot of stuff like that. We did out of the box stuff to try to reach people, and it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was it, buddy. Ah, the old VHS. It's funny because today I was cleaning out a this compartment in my house, and I I had one a VHS tape that was brand new that was wrapped up, still in the cellophane package. I have absolutely no use for it because. I don't even have a VCR anymore. I used to have a VCR DVD player. And that was when they were phasing out VCR and DVDs were coming in. And so you could still pop it in. Now, there there are ways you can convert VCR to DVD. You just have to take it in somewhere where they can do that. And I wish I still had those tapes. I did some stuff back in the day that was pretty out of the box different but anyway i want to reach young people and i want a hey, blockbuster you know there was one left in the country and it was up in oregon and when blockbuster went out of business that was a big deal because everybody went to blockbuster i mean i used to remember friday night movie night you get a pizza with your family. Oh, it was fun, you know. You went to the video store. You picked out your videos. <laughs> Got your popcorn, your candy, your drinks. You came back and everybody watched a movie together. It was fun. You were two or three movies, whatever. And that idea is gone. It is gone. But when the last blockbuster finally closed... It hung on for years and years. They went up and they interviewed the the store owner, and it was like it was like the end of an era. It really was. It was the last one, and it closed. I mean, of course, now you can you know they got Redbox at the stores where you can get a movie out of it. Of course, you can get Netflix and whatever Hulu, watch whatever you want. It's easier. It's more convenient, but you just can't replace the actual going to the video store experience. Yep, me too. It's kind of a nostalgia, something that, you know, somebody will bring it back someday, but it'll be with robots and we'll be flying spaceships in to get our VCR videos. <laughs> it's the Jetsons, man. Woo, yeah. We'll bring it back after about a hundred years now. Anyway, so yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. Now I know I got all this work to do. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh boy. So basically what we'll do is we'll just use the discord web conferencing feature and just like we do this, except that it'll be more shorter segments with videos and songs and music and funny videos. And maybe we'll do some giveaways and contests and things like that. We'll make it really fun and then invite people and open it up for more, you know, to see if we can get more people. Maybe we can just get some of the people that we already have and, and then from there try to grow even more. It's a solid idea. Um, there used to be a show years ago, and actually I do have YouTube video footage of this, and I'll have to play some for you because if you want to see the 80s in its glory, in its heyday, with the haircuts and the music and the Christian music scene and all that, I got a show. It's called Fire by Night. It was with a guy named Blaine. And he was this surfer kid from California that had this show. And he would have big artists like Carmen. Carmen was, you know, if you, anybody that's been a Christian for years knows Carmen. You probably know Carmen, right, Game Warrior? You know his music? Don't say no. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, uh, I don't know who that is. What about Amy Grant? Michael W. Smith? All right, there you go. These were the kinds of musicians that would come on his show. But what he would do is he would do these skits, like Saturday Night Live. Like, the funniest one he did is, this one really, really made me laugh. Some of them were really dumb and cheesy. And it was just not really, you know, it wasn't high production, okay? But... He had um, the Three Stooges, Moe, Larry, and Curly. And they were painting a house. And Larry, uh, Larry and Curly came up. You probably don't even know who the Three Stooges are, do you? Or maybe you do. I think everybody knows the Three Stooges. No! Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to educate you guys on, on pop culture. All right. The Three Stooges were funny um, comedy team. They were three men. This is going back to like the 1940s. Yeah, they were comedy legends. They would slap each other and hit each other, and it was funny. But anyway, so long story short, the skit was about Mo got saved. He accepted Jesus. But Larry and Curly didn't. And they were painting a house and they come up to Mo and they were they were talking about how, you know, everything was so bad in their life and they just wanted to go get drunk after they after they get down with work. And Mo he takes his paintbrush and he goes across their face and says, You guys, what you need is to accept Christ as your savior. And he was like smacking him around. It was you had to watch him, and it was hilarious. And then he would do like these different things and he would interview guests and then they would go like snowboarding in Colorado. And, you know, it was just, it was a show where it was just every 15 minutes, there was a different segment. It was like, a, I think it was like an hour long show, but it was once a week. And it, it, it was huge back in the day. I mean, youth groups would play it on their you know saturday nights they would all get together and they would watch these shows because they were effective there was an effective way of communication and it was all geared towards young people and they would have young people sometimes they'd have like a studio audience <clears throat> and they would do you know like youth groups and stuff like that they'd go to youth groups and they had big concerts it was fun. It was a fun time. I mean, I, I was a youth pastor back in the day doing that. It was inter interesting times. But anyway. Well, that was a, excuse me, that was a quick hour. All right. Well, I won't keep you guys. I appreciate your feedback and 
get a, and get in touch Thursday night.